Well, Jake's a, a, a he was a great young man. He's a great player, uh, and I mean you don't really replace that kind of young man. It's a standpoint that uh, what you do is you just continue to build with the players that you have. But uh, when you get a guy like that at this level, I mean it, it's pretty rare occasion. And that uh, Jake broke all the records last year for Division Two as far as tackles in a season. So uh, you know you don't really focus on on losing him. You focus on the guys you have coming in and basically trying to be the best that you can with each one of those. And uh, we kind of have some of that standpoint. Uh, uh, with some of the guys we lost last year, and then there's uh, some of the guys that uh, we thought uh, that had another year left <laughs> to play that are, are no longer with us. So uh, you're going to see a whole lot of new faces on, on our squad, but uh, I'll tell you what, the guys we've got, uh, I'm very proud of, and I think that they have a tremendously high expectation uh, for where we're going this year. As far as a starting running back, uh, starting quarterback, uh, do you have some answers for those questions yet? <laughs> Well, you know, um, Jake Cimolino uh, was basically already in the top eight ever in rushing at uh, Colorado Mesa and uh, kind of ran into some problems and had some back issues, and so he will not be back. Uh, I think we've got a very talented stable of running backs. Uh, you know, Ricky Trinidad last year was playing for, through the first three four games, and then he got hurt. Uh, Ricky is a young man that uh, actually I'd recruited as well when we were at Nebraska Kearney, had played for us there. He's a guy that rushed for over 1,000 yards in the MIAA uh, two years ago, and so uh, he's going to he's gonna, He's a very, very explosive back. He is back healthy. Uh, I think he's going to be a tremendous running back. Uh, we've got Jaron Dennis, who uh, uh, is basically from Grand Junction there, an outstanding running back as well. Uh, we're moving D.J. Hubbard back into the backfield. And there's two freshmen that we redshirted last year, Daryl Hawkins from Valor Christian, uh, and then Christian Fonbuena. So we've, we've got five really, really talented running backs. So uh, I'm not overly concerned there. I think we've got guys that can do a great job for us, and uh, they, do, they do a good job of things we're doing. Uh, at quarter quarterback, uh, you know, we've got two of the guys back that uh, had started games for us last year. Uh, Eric Kaiser had started uh, several of the games uh, uh, for us. He was going to be our starter early in the season, had an uh, injury in the uh, first game, uh, came back later on, uh, really had kind of let us down to some uh, a string of some wins, uh, then kind of got banged up again. And so it's kind of a standpoint that uh, uh, Kyle Duran had also stepped in and played. So we've got some guys have some experience. And so uh, honestly, uh, the things that we, that we were doing offensively this year, I think are guys have a better better feel and a better uh, idea of what we're doing now than what we ever have. You open the season on September 6th at home, which is uh, kind of a rarity, I guess, uh, in the RMAC. A lot of times you have to go on the road to open the season, so you get Dixie State coming into Grand Junction. What are some of your hopes and thoughts for that one? Well, you know, it's it's going to, going to be great to open up with Dixie at home. Uh, anytime you can have a home game, the first game, I mean, that's a great thing for the fans. It's a great thing for the players. I think it's a great thing for the university. Uh, Dixie is is a very good football team, and uh, we've had a chance to exchange some video with them, and they've got some. Uh, uh, they they're a big physical football team, and so they've got some good players coming in. But uh, uh, you know, really, what we're doing is we're focusing in on the process of being the best team that we can be. And so as we get going, I mean, it's going to be exciting to have that. But uh, obviously, uh, as you. Start Start moving through the season. You're gonna. You've got to be able to learn to win at home. You got to learn to win on the road. And uh, really, our, our guys have done a great job of just focusing in on the process of taking care of the things that you control. Nick Leonard is the starting center for the Mavericks. He's a junior out of Broomfield, Colorado, Broomfield High School. Uh, Nick, as coach has mentioned, you, you got some new faces uh, you're going to be blocking for this year. How is that? Uh, how has your unit meshed uh, in spring ball, and, and how do you anticipate uh, the offensive line looking this year? I mean, we lost Jake Chimolino, one of the best running backs I've ever blocked for. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to hurt the team, but we have plenty of young kids stepping up on the old line. Um, I moved, I played guard the past two years. I moved to center, and so I got some young freshmen taking my spot at right guard. And we're going to, we have a good gel of about seven, eight guys that will play the whole time and give 100% effort, and we'll do great. Colorado Mesa has had a lot of success as an athletic department. Uh, Tom Spicer, your new athletic director from two years ago, you won the, the All Sports Cup as the best athletic department in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, but I know the football team wants to uh, get back to, to winning those championships. Yeah, this past year we were three, four games. We were so close to winning. Just couple plays away and all spring all summer we've talked about how we want to win the RMAC championship and we believe we can do that to help our football program be what it was in the 80s when national championships were being won.
Ryan Sivitz is a starting defensive end, 6'2", 220, out of Arvada High School. Or Arvada West, is that right? Ryan, 220? Is that yeah, that's that correct. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Got on the scale this morning. <laughs> yep. Um, what are some of your thoughts heading into this year? Uh, coach Martin, I believe it's his third year as your head coach. And, and what are some of the goals that, that the team has heading into 2014? Well, when Coach Martin came in in uh, 2012, um, we were – we're just a much better team now. Uh, what we do now, uh, it's more intense. Uh, our work ethic is much higher. Um, our um, discipline, uh, we have better discipline on the team now. And so what we expect, you know, we always have high expectations, so that's never changed. Um, and so I think with, uh, I think we'll have some uh, high expectations this year. We've got some. Brian had just mentioned it, but uh, you had some close calls last year, um, and also at one point I believe you were five and two to start the season, and then went on a, uh, a skid and I believe lost four in a row to end the season. H how was that set with you guys during the off season? Um, well, that's unacceptable. I mean, uh, those games were pretty close. Uh, that just came down to finishing games, and uh, we didn't finish games in the fourth quarter. And so, what we put emphasis on, you know is finishing uh, that goes in the weight room, you know, fin finishing every rep, you know, just putting that mindset into finishing games this year. <laughs> Zach Beach is the defensive tackle, 6'1", 235, out of Castle Rock, went to Douglas County High School. Zach, as a senior on the team coming into this season, how does that change your approach? Um, being a senior, it makes you want to leave off um, on a strong point. You want to end on a high note as being a senior, um, and you want to make sure you pave the way and make sure that all the guys underneath you believe in the team and believe in what you believe in and, and want to accomplish the same things that you do. Um, that goes for you know winning, winning an RMAC championship, having a winning record and being a, success, a successful team. Isaac? Yes, sir. Isaac Cook from right here in Colorado Springs, went to Liberty High School. Isaac has a linebacker, obviously. We just talked about Jake Edmiston and what, what he did at Colorado Mesa and the great career he had as a linebacking core. Uh, how does that change what, what you're going to be doing this year and what the other linebackers are going to be doing? Um, obviously, like Coach Martin said, there's no replacing a guy like Jake Edmonston. Um, all I can do is I move down from safety this year, put on a little weight, um, and he's actually, we're fortunate enough to have him back for this fall. He's going to help coach. He had an injury um, during the Seahawks camp, so we're fortunate enough to have him back, and all I can do is learn as much as I can from him. Um, that's all we can do as a defense, the, learn his strategy, learn how he studied film, the effort on the field. We can only uh, try to remake what he was, and I think we have plenty of players, and uh, our linebacking core is still strong, and uh, Coach Martin, the other coach, Martin, is a, is a great defensive uh, linebackers coach that is going to really help us. I believe Jake also made that move from safety to linebacker early in his career. Mm -hmm. um, any, any, uh, anything you can gain from Jake's knowledge on making that transition? Yeah, just uh, being physical. Jake was a physical guy, not afraid to step into any hole. I mean, even farther back, I mean, he... Uh, he didn't even get scholarship to come to Mesa. He, he walked on, and I mean, just look at what he did. So um, a lot we can learn from him, and uh, a lot that I have learned from him. Seth Ramsey, offensive tackle yes, here on the panel, playing left tackle <laughs> again over there. Uh, he's from Eagle, Colorado, went to Eagle Valley High School. Seth, uh, similar to Nick, I mean, uh, you have some new guys that you're going to have to block for, but. Uh, how have you guys gelled heading into this season? You know, as an offensive line, this year we're, we have a lot more depth, a lot more younger guys, like Nick said, are willing to step up. And they're all putting the work in. They all, you know, they're doing what it takes to become a dominant offensive line. And that's what it's going to take. I mean, we're going to block. We know our backfield's going to run for us. We know our receiver's going to catch for us. Quarterback's going to do what he needs to do. We just need to do what we got to do up front and make sure we do it to the best of our ability. Being a Colorado 
out of Mesa, and as I mentioned, the, the great success the athletic program in general has had. You see the soccer team winning the championship. You see the uh, the baseball team winning the championship, going to the College World Series. And does that put some maybe some more pressure on you guys that you feel like, okay, we can't, we, we, we need to get some of this too. It's we, we don't want all the glory to go to all these other programs. I mean, we've always felt like we could be a better team, and we've always wanted and worked towards that championship. And there's no extra pressure. We all know we can do it. We all buckle down. We all put the work in. It's not an added pressure. It's we need to do it. The time is now to do it. I mean, there's no more time for waiting. Questions for Colorado Mesa? Yeah, I've talked to him a little bit here this summer. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay up in Grand Junction, um, but I have uh, talked to him on the phone and texted him. And uh, you know, he is bringing some of the stuff he learned back from camp. But honestly, it's uh, it's just his work ethic. It got him there. It's his work ethic that uh, carried him through the entire camp, and and that's what he's bringing back, and that's what we need. Thank you.